This is part two of me redoing my portfolio using Squarespace. In the last video, I took you through the journey of how I designed my homepage. In this video, I'll be adding my case studies and creating an about me page. Hi guys, my name is Chilli and welcome back to my channel. In the last video, I showed how it's all about experimenting and you have to just get started. One thing that stops designers from working on their portfolio is feeling like you have to have this amazing visual idea that represents everything you are as a designer. And that can be daunting. It's all about getting started and figuring it out as you go. I'm also a huge advocate for using templates. If you're feeling stuck, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Find a template that you like and add your style to it. So let's get into my case studies. This is the homepage I designed in the last video. If you haven't watched that, I will link that below. But now let's build the case study pages. So this is how you add a new page. So I then selected portfolio pages. As you can see, there are three choices to choose from, from the portfolio templates. At this point, I was a little bit confused because I wanted like case study pages and these look more like home pages. I then went back to add a page and chose page layouts. And here you can see different page layouts for actual case studies. I selected the first template and here I am renaming it for the first case study. These are the page settings where you can rename the page, rename the URL, and also add a password to each individual page. I made a bit of a mistake when getting started. Maybe I should have selected portfolio as my main page, but I like the ideas that I came up with for my home page. And the portfolio template can be a little bit restrictive, so I'm going to continue with what I've got. But if you are using Squarespace and you want the portfolio features, it's best to select the portfolio page as your home page. There are pros and cons to using a portfolio page. The pro is that they link from page to page and they're pretty uniform. Another pro is that when you hover over the image, you get an interaction, which you can't add to other images and other links. I feel like Squarespace should add that as a feature. Here's a deeper dive into the portfolio feature. I like that there's a hover interaction when you hover the mouse, but I find this template very restrictive. You can't personalize much. You can only play with the size of the text, the space between them, or the size of the blocks or images. It doesn't allow me to be as creative as I wanted my homepage to be. So I haven't used a portfolio page and the pro for me is that I can add subtext to explain what each project is about. I feel like this will help anyone looking at the portfolio to quickly skim and help them decide which case study they want to go into and read further. Another pro is that because all these pages are built separately, you can put a password on the individual page which you can't really do on the portfolio page from the last time I checked. So if you have any projects that you don't want live to everybody, you can put a password on the individual pages if you build it the way I've built it. For my case studies, I've been using this case study template, which I've gone through before. I've got a full video on this, which I will link up there and below. I have been asked a few times how you use this template. People have asked if you export the pages to present. So, the reason it's in Figma is because it allows you the space to bring all your work together. You have the space to dump everything that you need and then to start making sense of it. As you can see here, these are screenshots of presentations or documents that we used at this particular company that I worked at. A lot of them are not very aesthetically pleasing, but I then go back and redesign some of the documents that I want to add into my case study. For example, the personas that we used were done on a very plain document, but I want them to look more aesthetically pleasing for my case study, so I redesigned it. You can then use this whole structure to add the case studies into your portfolio. That means copying the text into the website and adding the images. Don't export the whole frame and add it to the website with the text as image. I've seen this done a few times, especially on Behance. This doesn't allow the website to be responsive and the text can tend to look a little bit grainy. When you're presenting your case study during an interview, you can either clean this up and present directly from Figma, sometimes I do that, or you can present your case study directly from your portfolio or you can add the information into a Google slide. There's no right or wrong, you choose how you want to present. So what do you do if you have a project that is under an NDA or hasn't been released yet? This can be a tricky territory and you should refer back to your NDA to understand the details. But this is how I personally do this. On my online portfolio, I have a high level explanation of the project and the achievements in the same way that you would do on your CV. And if it's relevant for an interview, I will present the case study from a Google slide presentation. That is just how I navigate this 
you decide what's best for you. It can be tricky because sometimes that's your best work and you need it to get your next job. So here I am adding my case study into my website. As you can see, I am copying the text from Figma and adding it into Squarespace. How it looks on Squarespace is also going to be a trial and error. You're gonna to have to play around with this layout. The Figma template is not a design template, it is an information template. And here I am trying different sizes for the headings and the subheadings and moving the text around. Now that I'm done, I'm going to add links at the bottom of the page so that you can navigate to the next case study like you can with the portfolio template. As I don't have that, I have to do it manually. Now let's change this typeface. I really wanted to use Satoshi, which I saw the other day and I thought it looked beautiful, but but I am restricted to Squarespace's selection, so let's see what they have. I went with Poppins in the end. I like how rounded it is and how clean it looks. Here I am playing around with some of the settings, especially the line height. I feel like when you have a lot of text, in big paragraphs, it's good to have a bit of breathing room to make it easier to read. As I was doing my final checks through this case study, I realized that I forgot to replace some of the text. I still had placeholder text for the design system. At this point, I was really exhausted and couldn't continue the storytelling around how I built this design system. This is where ChatGPT comes in handy. I feed it a prompt and it gives me some information. I've even asked it to make it a bit shorter. And next I will be editing it to make it sound a bit more like me. So this is the final case study page. I would then duplicate this and add the information from other case studies that would help me to work faster. I actually lost the videos of when I was creating my about page, but here it is. I wanted it to include my content creation work and the fact that I speak at conferences and panels. Now that that is all done, last but not least, the favicon. So I like to use a little chili icon for this. I just created this in Figma and exported it as a PNG. I'm sure there are easier ways to do this, but here I am checking the favicon size. You then go into your website settings and you select favicon. Then you upload your image. Now let's reload the site and see if it has updated. Let's go to my website. And there you have it, you've got the little chili up there. That is my portfolio finally done. And it took a while, it actually took a few weeks because I was job hunting in between. I hope you enjoyed that journey. And if you did, please help me out by hitting the like button and subscribing. And if you do update your portfolio, drop me a link in the comments. I would like to see what you guys are building. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.